Hello everyone, thanks for clicking and welcome back to my channel. Today we will be talking about flex temperature takeoffs. However, before we get started, kindly consider helping the channel grow by subscribing and giving this video a like, should you find it helpful. So without any further ado, let's dive right in. Let's start by why we use reduced thrust takeoffs in the first place. The benefits of taking off with less than maximum thrust are as follows. Lower fuel flow and hence lower AGT for takeoff. Lower fuel burn. Fewer operational events and engine checks. Lower maintenance cost since the AGT margin decreases slower over time and hence longer engine life. A flex temperature takeoff does not use toga detent or maximum thrust for takeoff each time. In the Airbus fleet, for example, you set the thrust levers to the flex MCT detent. And the FADEC or Full Authority Digital Engine Control orders the engine to only provide a specific amount of thrust that corresponds to the flex temperature or fake outside of temperature, so to speak, you put in in the MCD during your pre-flight preparation. Let's have a look at the jet engine thrust curve to better understand the concept of flex temperature. If we take it very basic for now, we have a thrust versus outside air temperature graph. Simply speaking, we can note that as temperature increases, thrust output decreases, hence engine performance decreases. I'm sure we all agree on this one. Conversely speaking, the colder it gets, or the lower the outside air temperature, the higher the thrust output we get from the engine. Now I ask you this, does that mean that I keep on getting more and more thrust as it gets colder outside? Well, obviously the answer is no. The engine manufacturers have built limits to the amount of thrust an engine can produce. Technically speaking, jet engines are capable of producing more thrust than what the manufacturers allow us to have. Meaning, up to the so-called TREF or flat-weighted temperature, the thrust can, that can be produced is limited electronically by the FADEC. And that is for mechanical limitation reasons, such as EGT limit and compression ratio. So below a certain temperature and certain density, the engine will produce the same amount of thrust regardless of the outside air temperature. We call that a flat-weighted engine. And it is represented on this graph by the horizontal portion over here. So a flat rated engine is one that is capable of producing the same amount of thrust below a certain temperature, but with less effort, hence less fuel flow. If we look closely, we can see that the graph produces a value for temperature that we call TREF, reference temperature. TREF is a temperature value at which if the temperature is above, the engine will produce less and less thrust. However, any temperature below TREF, the engine will produce the same amount of thrust in this case, maximum thrust or toga thrust. Now let's see how does that relate to us in our everyday operations. Let's assume that today's temperature is very cold outside, so that it produces a maximum thrust output, which is right here. It can't produce any more. And that gives us maximum thrust. Maximum thrust is toga thrust, but we can also relate that straight into a weight axis. Toga thrust corresponds to maximum type of weight. Because if that is the maximum thrust I'm able to get today, it means that this is the maximum takeoff weight I can carry. Let's look at a different scenario now. If we were to operate in a temperature, say it's above 2 ref, so a high temperature will only give us this much thrust output. If we can only get this much thrust and not the maximum thrust, then I can only take off with this much weight and not the maximum takeoff weight. Actually, that is why we need to calculate our actual takeoff weight before. Because with an increase in temperature, the engine produces less and less thrust, hence less weight we can take off with. Here's a different scenario. Let's say, for example, today the temperature is 21 degrees. This will give us a flat radiant power, which will equivalent to a maximum takeoff weight of 77 tons for, say, an Airbus 320. Very good performance. However, we go to our aircraft and we receive the load sheet and find out that today's takeoff weight is, say, 65 tons only. So this much weight requires only this much thrust. And the way to tell the FADEC to give us only this much thrust is by putting in a flex temperature that correlates to that weight slash thrust. In this case, a flex temperature of 63 degrees. This 63 degrees, so-called flex temperature in terms of performance, is the amount of thrust that the engine would produce as if it was actually 63 degrees outside. So the whole concept of flex temperature is to get the engine to produce an amount of thrust that is just enough 
for the current takeoff weight, thus protecting the engine from premature tear and wear and extending its life, hence saving costs for the company. And by the way, the graph right here is used to merely illustrate to you guys the concept of flex temperature. It is not for scale. Now, let's have a look at some key points to keep in mind in regards to flex temperature. Of course, as always, there are limitations. The first flex temperature must never be lower than the actual outside air temperature. Otherwise, it's not going to be beneficial for us. Tmax, or the maximum flex temperature, is usually ISA plus 53 degrees. At sea level, it would be 68 degrees. TREF, or the minimum flex temperature, is 43 degrees. So we get the margin of the temperature uh, for which we can use as flex between 43 degrees and 68 degrees maximum. And uh, guys, I'm talking here about the Airbus fleet, specifically the, the 320. And next, maximum reduced thrust must never be more than 25% of maximum thrust. Hence, the derated uh, takeoffs are maximum uh, 24%. And last but not least, no uh, flexible temperature takeoffs permitted on contaminated runways. Derated takeoffs are, but flex temperature are not. And soon I will be making another video about what is the difference between the flex temperature and the derated uh, thrust, because there is a difference. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is it. This is going to be the uh, end of the video. If you have found it helpful, please make sure you subscribe to the channel, give it a thumbs up. And if you have any questions, make sure you leave them in the comment section below and I'll be more than happy to answer you guys. So until the next one, see ya.